All right, so I'm gonna use this uh, camera on a gimbal and do a little video of my office slash studio slash man cave. It's where I work. It's also where the only place in the house where my wife will let me keep my hobbies and they are all over the place on the wall. Um, I started collecting cars or getting cars probably about the time I was eight years old. In 1968 when Hot Wheels first came out I was hooked and already started buying cars. I, I can't tell you what my first Hot Wheel was but I was one of those kids that played with some and kept every other car I had in the case and kept it perfect. In my 20s, my mom handed me my cases because I was moved out of the house and I had over a hundred cars in pretty close to mint condition. I carried those around for many years and just kept them in the closet, didn't do anything with them. And then somewhere in my mid 30s, I, had, I was married, had three kids by this time and I found out about this thing called eBay where people were selling their Hot Wheels, their red line cars and making good money. And so I decided to give it a try. And this was back probably 15, 16 years ago when maybe more, maybe more like 20 years ago, right at the beginning of eBay when you had to put your pictures in a separate place and your descriptions were on eBay and then people paid you with a check or money order and you typically waited till that check or money order cleared before you would ship the car to them, unless you knew them and trusted them. And so the very first car I put on eBay, I had no idea what cars were rare in my collection, what cars were more valuable than the others, but the very first car I put out there was a purple evil weevil that was nearly in mint condition. I had people emailing me trying to buy it and have me sell it direct to them and take it off eBay. I decided to let it run and back then I made close to $700 on that one car and I was addicted already to selling them I guess because of the money and it was nice and good money so I sold over 80 cars in my collection. Luckily 20 cars survived and I held on to them and I have those 20 still and of course I bought way more probably have over a thousand cars now on the walls in my office and that purple evil weevil I never got back probably would cost me two or three or four thousand to get it back so and I'm not gonna do that so I bought a purple restored evil weevil that came up on eBay that was really nicely done and that's the only purple one I have um, over on my walls, I kind of keep them in order. I have my 1968 cars in alphabetical order. All the cars up here, like the starting with the Beatnik Bandit on down to the silhouette and all the various colors that I have over that I've purchased over the years. Uh, in this case, I did do something fun with the badges and kind of put them up above the case as many as I could fit for that year. Up here I've got an uncut sheet, if you guys remember these, called Wacky Packages. I bought this in Hollywood and this sheet is actually cut in half because a full sheet actually has two full sets on it so I had it framed. Um, I keep uh, on this one shelf in my office just a bunch of things the cases, the boxes, the things I've kind of found and collected over the years. Um, in the middle now, in, these, in those 16 car cases that I have on the wall here, I keep the black walls. I just barely started purchasing black walls, found it to be kind of fun. At first I wouldn't even come anywhere near these, but some of the older black walls I've started collecting and bought a couple of collections sets that people were listing on eBay and, and I've got some fairly nice really clean 
cars. I guess one of my favorites is that, and I had, I've had this for a long time and I don't even know where I got it, but I have that black wall Camaro that, uh, again, I don't know where it came from. But uh, yeah, I keep the black walls there over here. I've got my Grand Prix cars and the 1969 cars, all the ones that I have. I've separated them. This one isn't all done alphabetically and I keep my, my Grand Prix cars all and Toreros in this case that I just put on the wall recently. I just recently added two of the 50 car cases um, to, the, to the man cave so I can fill it with all the extra 69s I had. This particular case over here, I have my, I call it my top cars from 68 to 71. So I have my best examples of one of each in alphabetical order. So, you know, I've got my light blue Barracuda, the old, one of the few Camaros I have, that orange one, a, you know, a purple Corvette, and all of El Dorado and so on. So some of these are my best examples. You know, bifocal and classic cord that I have. Don't have many of those. But these cars are pretty, pretty dang clean. And just a few things on the bottom row. Miscellaneous stuff. This is a, a case that I keep the heavyweights in. Another one of those 50 car cases that I have all my heavyweights in. Don't have many heavyweights either. I just kind of started these. Most of the heavyweights I had, I sold um, in those original 80s and I wasn't buying them back because they didn't fit in the, I wasn't buying them back because they didn't fit in the carny cases very well. So I, um, most of them didn't fit. So I, I just recently started buying these. I've got my dragsters and the longer cars over here as well. Over here, it, you know, I keep the, uh, Chrome club cars and spoilers. So I've got a lot of um, Chrome club cars that are really nice. The Mustangs and the Cuda and the heavy Chevy. More Mustangs than anything else. And that spills over into this case. And then I've got all the other spoilers like the Light My Firebirds and Nitty Gritty Kitties and TNT Birds and Sugar Caddies over here. And that's where all those are kept and I'm totally out of room to add any more unless I move things around a little bit. Over here on this side, I have, um, I call this my rainbow case where I have my classic Woody on the first three rows. I've got room for a few more. And then I've got about 50 or 60 turbo fires in all colors and super nice examples of Turbo fires and everything. I've got everything except for candy apple green and a and a good pink one. Below that, just in these four cases right here, these four on the below that, I keep my restorations. These are cars I restored myself back when I was restoring anything and everything. And I probably restored cars that I really never should have. I didn't know much about rarity and colors. And so if a car was a little bit scratched up or beat up, I restored it and I probably, who knows what I, what I may have done, but I, I restored it. I probably sold over 200 restorations. Uh, and so I've thinned this down quite a bit, but I keep all the red ones here, etc. A few more black walls. Then you move over to the, the 1970s cases. And uh, this is where I keep my 70 cars, the mod quads and Caribous, Carabos, uh, sorry, paddy wagons. Some really nice examples in these cases. I was about 10 years old by this time and this is when I really was into Hot Wheels. I, do, I did keep my original Magenta Classic Nomad and I've since added a, quite a few more and so when I can find a good clean shiny base Nomad, I'm, I buy it. The price is right. So I've got about six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 20, over 20 Nomads 
and then you, I move over to my 71 to 73 case and my few examples of bifocals and classic chords and cockney cabs and so forth are in that case all the way down to some 72s and 73s at the bottom sandwich odd job super fine turbine etc in this case i have the 76 cars and i tried to get one good example or so of every one of those um, the chrome cars up there and then the shell promos and the wisconsin toy company cars up on top you know if i the few blisters that i have i keep up here i have a lot of doozies and auburns i went to a gift or a uh, antique store in California once and saw a doozy in the case and I said you have any more Hot Wheels and he brought out a shoebox that was full of just doozies and auburns and this is a, not one of the auburns that was in that case and this is a couple of the doozies and you can see he, I have the receipts that the guy had the, the guy that bought them would actually uh, paper clip his receipt to the car or write the date on the back the exact date that he bought it and it was filled, the shoebox was filled with red line doozies, black wall doozies and black wall auburns. And unfortunately I sold a bunch of those, I wish I hadn't, but I have a few survivors and the, one, the ones in my case are actually blister poles that I pulled right out of the blister for that. But I got, the guy was trying to sell that, uh, the, that doozy for $200. I said, hey, the market's way down. There's no way that's worth $200 right now and I convinced him to sell me the whole shoebox for $200, so I, I went home with a pretty killer deal on that. Over here is my 74 to 75 and Flying Colors cars, and uh, again, I try to get one good example or two of those cars. And then below that, uh, this is a recent thing I did. I bought another Carney case, and I, would, I thought it'd be fun to fill it with every motorhome I could find and so this is the you know Bob Rosa GMC motorhomes that I could find out there even a couple of the Leo car Leo motorhomes from India and then below that anything with three axles so all the trucks that I could find out there to help finish it off and fill it up so Hot Wheels everywhere all the other knickknacks and stuff I put on the wall, like this old Texaco key from, if you remember those from the old gas stations. And then this old train light is one of the few things I have left over from my brother who passed away and was a extreme train collector. And anyway, that's my man cave. Hope you enjoyed the tour.